Guys, I need your help. I think I have an unhealthy addiction to Magic the Gathering. In this video, I'm going to get into all the weird justifications for the decks I've built, and I'm going to need your help to determine if, you know, I've got an issue or if this is just normal behavior. So, uh, as some of you may know, if you've watched my content before, my first deck was a Gandalf the Grey Spell Center deck. But I'm going to get into four other decks I've built. Yes, I now have five decks in only five months of playing Magic. So I'm going to go into the four other decks I've built and kind of tell you the stories. And then at the end, you can let me know if I've got a problem or not. So first, we've got Sauron the Dark Lord. Now, the story behind this deck is kind of crazy. So me and a buddy went to our local card shop to buy some set boosters and split them. I got four packs of Wilds of Eldraine and two packs of Lord of the Rings. In those two set boosters for Lord of the Rings, I pulled a full art hollow orcish bowmaster. Yes, you heard that correctly. My first time ever opening magic packs in only two set boosters for Lord of the Rings, I got a $70 card at the time. Of course, I'm new to magic, so I haven't even realized what I've pulled until I show my buddy and he holds the card in his hand, open palm, shaking, saying, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Now, I know I've got the juice. So, I make a decision. I want more cards, so why not trade in this Bowmaster for some more packs? Do I regret that decision? Kinda, more so because, you know, the memory of pulling such a good card and I probably won't pull a card that good again, but not really to keep it to play it because, you know, it's kind of broken and I want to play, you know, good cards, but not so good that people are like, damn bro, why are you doing that? Anyway, I go to trade in the Bowmaster for two packs of Wild Devil Drain and four packs of Lord of the Rings, set boosters again. In the Lord of the Rings packs, I pull a Sauron the Dark Lord. Now I read the card and realize me and my buddy can probably find a good amount of Ring Tempt and Amass Orc cards in our collection to build a decent jank deck. So that's exactly what we did. God bless my boy for giving me a bunch of cards to make that deck because it's quickly become one of my favorites and I've only upgraded it a bit since I first built it. Now, let's get to the second deck. This one out of all the decks I've made is the most full send by far. I think about 15 to 20 cards I owned beforehand, the rest were singles, so that should give you an idea of cost. So the second deck I built was a Karlak aggro deck with Tavern Brawler as the background. You may be asking yourself, why a mono deck when you can choose a background? Well, I wanted a mono deck because I pulled Throne of Eldraine in those packs we spoke of earlier. Yeah, I know, the beginner luck is insane. So why Karlak? I mean, this is kind of lame, but I experienced the Karlak Romance glitch in Baldur's Gate 3. Meaning, even if I romanced her correctly, there can be no romance dialogue or scenes with Karlak. What's even worse is, I was in Act 3 once I realized, and the glitch happens in Act 2. So obviously, there's no going back. Anyway, I'm in bed one night after playing Baldur's Gate 3. I have a mono deck on my mind because of Throne of Eldraine, and Karlak on my mind because of the glitch. Then, boom, it hits me. Mono red, Karlak, aggro deck. I hop on EDH rec to see the cards that synergize, an architect to build my deck with cards I already own, and the ones I want to buy. Now here we are, an expensive aggro waifu deck. Now moving on to deck 3. This is where the justifications get absolutely paper thin. So if you've watched my content before, you would know that my first magic video was on transitioning from Yu-Gi-Oh to magic. In that video, I told a story about how my friend let me borrow a deck to play for the first time. What was that deck? Treebeard Gracious Toast. Now, if you look at the three decks I built before this, I have three of the five colors in the color pie. So my justification is, I want a green-white deck, and Treebeard is the first commander I've ever played. So now I have my fourth deck. See what I mean by reasons becoming paper thin? Just wait for this next one. Deck number five, Galadriel Light of Valinor. How did we get there? Well, she came in a Lord of the Rings Christmas scene box. Why did I buy this box? Because I wanted Galadriel's dismissal for my Treebeard deck. You see, Treebeard is the big boss, and getting him big takes a lot of work, and is the main purpose of that deck. One thing I learned from playing him before is that protecting him is really important to the strategy. Now I have Galadriel's dismissal, but I have five other cool looking cards, then I read Galadriel's effects, and she's busted. So. What's the justification for this deck? Ooh, shiny cargo, boom, boom. <laughs> Fortunately, I didn't spend a ton on a bunch of singles. I bought the Elven Council Lord of the Rings precon, took some cards out, made Galadriel Light of Valinor the commander, then added in the other scene cards I had left, plus some jank to make it honestly a pretty good deck. 
Anyway, now I've taken you through my full five month journey with magic. Do you think I have a problem? Let me know down below. Take it easy.